We are in the middle of tick week here on New Centre Maine and tonight we're focusing on winter ticks and their tragic effect on moose calves in northwestern Maine. Unlike deer ticks, winter ticks don't carry diseases, but they are draining the life out of animals in the wild, especially very young moose. New Centre Maine's Vivian Lee has more from rural Somerset County. Winter ticks killed the highest percentage of young moose calves this year since tracking surveys began more than eight years ago. Warming winters with less snow is helping those winter ticks thrive, making young moose even more vulnerable. They are the official animal of the Pine Tree State. At about 70,000 strong, Maine is a home to the largest population of moose outside of Alaska. The big draw is an abundance of commercial forest land considered prime moose habitat. But there is a new threat to their survival, a tiny parasite that is literally sucking the life out of young calves. And you see that these moose are losing 25-30% of their body weight in 12 weeks. That's a recipe for death. Lee Cantor is Maine's moose biologist. He says the culprit is winter ticks, also known as moose ticks, which have been pestering moose for more than a century. Since 2014, Cantor has tracked moose populations, including the mortality rate in collared calves. Each winter, teams in a helicopter capture moose and release them after fitting them with a GPS collar. Biologists track their patterns, including text alerts when that animal has likely died. Cantor says it's not unusual to find an adult moose with as many as 90,000 ticks. Fully engorged, winter ticks resemble large raisins. Each adult female tick is capable of draining a milliliter of blood. These photos captured by a professional wildlife photographer in western Maine show the tragic toll winter ticks are having on both adults and young calves. They will often rub themselves bald trying to scrape them off. Others just don't make it. Some of that hair loss was from you know, the rubbing and everything with winter ticks on it. Signs that are still evident on the carcass of this adult moose, Cantor found in the woods, which has been here for weeks. It will stay the, on that animal for its entire life cycle, go through all of its molts, everything on that same animal, and then drop off. Flip it over. Griffin Dill is a manager of the University of Maine Cooperative Extension Tick Lab. He says unlike deer and dog ticks, winter tick larvae cluster in clumps on vegetation, including harvested trees. He says in early fall, winter ticks hitch a ride on a passing moose. So this moose can pull a chain of anywhere from a few dozen up to a few hundred potentially up to a thousand or more uh, of these tiny little ticks onto itself in this one fell swoop. But a growing number of calves, even at more than 400 pounds, can't survive the blood loss amid harsh winter conditions. And if they only had 10,000 on them, they can make it and survive to their first birthday. But when they got 60, no, they can't. The parasites are taking the biggest toll on young moose in parts of Piscataquis and Somerset counties, including this area off of a logging road Cantor shows us just west of Rockwood near Moosehead Lake. That's like a nice 86 percent of collared calves being tracked in these remote areas died by early May, less than a year after they were born. It's the highest death rate since the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife began tracking surveys. Another troubling trend, surviving the loss of gallons of blood from huge tick loads over the winter is also taking a toll on pregnant moose. Feeding on the moose, removing blood that that moose can't replace. Warming temperatures are allowing winter ticks to quest on moose longer. We're getting longer falls. We're not getting that permanent snow that we used to. Alexei Saran is an ecologist and postdoctoral researcher at the University of Vermont. He works with Cantor and biologists in Vermont and New Hampshire. He says research is underway to see if managing harvesting on commercial timberland could have an impact. So that they don't use the same areas where their ticks are dropping off, the adult females are dropping off in the spring. Um, because the thought is, is that they're going back into those areas in the mm -hmm. fall again and reinfesting themselves. Maine has also allowed hunting in half of the 2,000 square mile wildlife management district from the Canadian border to the boundary of Baxter State Park to try to lower the tick population. And the answer is not increasing moose. The answer is to have less of those moose to break the tick cycle so you don't have these calves taking the bulk of it. As we wrap up Tick Week tomorrow, we'll tell you what you can do to protect your furry friends from tick-borne illnesses. Vivian Lee, New Center, Maine. And if you've missed any of our Tick Week stories or would like more information, just head over to our website or the New Center, Maine app.